All right, guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we are finally getting the Rockstar on the track. Alright guys, welcome back and uh, as many of you may have followed, this was the ugliest Porsche in Australia which still is not looking a whole lot better but uh, it now has an Audi V8 swap in it and uh, it's been a long time coming but it's the first test day on the track. Now we're down here at Pheasant Wood Circuit which is not that far from my house although it was quite a hairy drive. I didn't have the, uh, the rocks to load it properly and I was getting a little bit of tail wagging the dog. Basically I had it on forwards. I thought being mid-engine there might be enough balance. It's not. I'm definitely going to put on backwards on the way back with the wing off of the car. We're here anyway, in one piece. Time to actually get out on the track and see if the Rockster works in any way. If it's going to get cooked. If I can just, if it just will do what it needs to do. So uh, let's stop yabbering. Get uh, some cameras in the car and uh, get out there and see what happens. So I thought that I'd fix my brake issue, but just before coming to the track, I realized that my booster was not working the way it's supposed to, and uh, I actually disconnected it completely to start with, converting it to manual braking only. And you can see here that my shifter cables are not doing what they're supposed to. And when I try and shift back from third to second, it keeps selecting fourth. And with the brake booster disconnected, I have almost no brakes. Pushing my foot to the floor, it really struggles to stop. So I went to the track with my mate Nathan in the GA Yaris and Spike in the 911. They were having a much better day than I was. First session out with the Rockstar and it has some issues. The brakes are still not good. Not having the booster connected, terrible idea. Um, Harry has manual brakes, but it, Harry's designed to have manual brakes. Uh, the Rockstar is not and disconnecting the booster means that there is almost no brakes. Pushing my foot through the floor and it does pull up just. It's not good. Uh, the V8, much more power than I had before. It's not super fast, but it is definitely much, much faster than what it was before. Um, the balance is still really odd, and yeah, overall, this is a fun little track. It's my first time here, but uh, yeah, it's good to actually give it a go on the, in the Rockster, and uh, I'm going to head out again. I've connected the booster up again. I'm going to see how that goes, see whether the brakes disconnect. I, I, just, I just have to see how it will run. Because at the moment, it's not great. I'm so excited my first time on the track is going to be with a professional. <laughs> Lewis Charles. <laughs> so this is Mrs. Jeff's very first time on any racetrack ever. And uh, she's going out with my mate Spike, who's an ex-pro race driver. So she's in good hands. Is she indicating? Oh, I see. It's a code.
it's like, so like, even with the Grand Prix and everything, I'm like told them that they, it's just we can go around the circle the quickest. And just sort of, basically, yes. But, yeah. It's good being with you, I have to say. Like, I think being with Jim and his driving has desensitized me, me a little bit. <laughs> Read all that what you will. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's um it's fun, but yeah, it's probably not something I'd go out my way to do. <laughs> uh. I'm glad my first time was a spy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was in the hands of a professional. <laughs> um yeah. It's I don't get it. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't get the attraction. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I was saying, trying to say the spike, like, it's, it's, it's just going around the circle, right? That's what you're doing. I don't get it. Sorry. That is so offensive. Right, I know. I'm just like, really? Yeah. You heard it first. Mrs. Jeff just doesn't get it. <laughs> Why? That's why. All right, back out again, this time with the brake booster connected. But uh, the trouble is, is that when I put my foot on the brake, the brake pedal stays down the sort of first inch of travel and I have to put my toe underneath it and lift it back up again to uh, get it to release completely. So not ideal. So you can see here how every time I try and select second, I go into fourth, and it's just not going to work like it is. I need to replace those shift cables. All right, second session out, and uh, with the brake booster connected, it wasn't a lot better. Uh, the brake is sticking down like the first inch of pedal travel, so it's got sort of dragging brakes I can't modulate the brake at all and uh, and then people started flagging me down and we had an incident my tail light fell out and there's there's bolts on the back that look like they never even had nuts on them now I haven't had these tail lights out of the car obviously somebody has and they never actually bolted them back in again so um, <sighs> it's just just rocks to things, just rocks to things. But um, the gear shift is horrible, the brakes are horrible. Um, after a few laps, it starts getting a little bit warm, but it's but it cools down again. Um, it smells warm, but it's it's doing what it needs to do. So uh, I'm gonna take it out for uh, one more go. It's uh, the tires are great; they have plenty of grip, but the handling feels a little bit weird. I think I need to still dial in the. Um, the coilovers, I might put a, uh, a, a few more clicks of uh, damping in because at the moment it's just it's all over the place. So the other thing I've got to fix is the sensitivity of the throttle needs to be adjusted in the ECU mapping as it's far too sensitive at the bottom of the input.
so a smart person after the first tail light fell out, going back on the track for a second time, maybe would have checked the other tail light. This one fell out as well. And it also was not bolted on. So that's definitely on me because I didn't check it. And uh, yeah, so I had it parked up for the last 10 or 15 minutes. Um, tires are great. The handling is still a little bit odd. It needs some tweaking. Uh, but the brakes are horrible and the shifting is horrible and I just have to get that fixed before I can really experience it properly. But the engine worked properly the whole time until I parked and I just moved the car, getting it ready to uh, actually load it back up onto the trailer and we had an issue. So I went over here and had a look and it's even coming out of the vent. At first I was really freaking out but then um, I smelt it and uh, I'm looking at sort of the area it's coming from and I'm pretty sure it's just power steering fluid. So it looks like a hose has popped off or something. It doesn't look like it's the end of the world but I have lost a whole lot of power steering fluid. All right, so that is definitely it for the rocks this track day. Um, I'm amazed at how it, the, the engine was, was really good. It got warm um, in a couple of bits, up to about 97 degrees, but it was still cooling. You know, just to take cool down lap, and that was fine. Uh, you could probably use another radiator in the front, like the, uh, the three radiators that uh, the 996s and the Boxster S's have. This only has the two radiators, which is definitely holding it back. Um, and I need to do something about the power steering. I need new tail lights. I need to paint the car. I need to fix the, um, the, the shifting and I need to uh, also uh, the brakes, the brakes, the brakes need fixing. So we got it out there, we did some laps. It didn't die, sort of, uh, until it was finished. Uh, my track day was done anyway because uh, I don't have any brake lights and I can't go out there without any brake lights. So uh, we're calling it, loaded it up and uh, was that a win? Maybe? Anyway guys, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this series. It's still not quite done yet uh, on the Rockstar. And uh, yeah, and uh, do all the things and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right, see you guys.